Hello, creative friends. It's Eugenia from Art Melt Time Miss Atelier, and uh, today we are going to be painting a parrot. <laughs> uh, you know that I do love birds, and I was um, I was flicking my old uh, paintings, and I found um, that cute little parrot. Uh, let me see. Uh, I had um, here. Where is it? There. So, uh, and I thought I would like to make something again, uh, similar to that, or I was thinking to make a rabbit. Uh, I, I wasn't sure what to do, but I thought, okay, let's go for the parrot first and then we'll make uh, soon uh, a rabbit. But for the moment, I will stick with this uh, cute little bird. Uh, so I have made my skates, I have masked it on um, my board, so if I need to move it around, I can. Uh, you know, my boards that, those ones that they flip around and uh, uh, they can lie around my <laughs> studio for a while. Actually, this drawing I made it uh, last week and prepared it for today. So what else I did, uh, I, I drew it with um, w watercolor uh, pencils. So uh, it shows me roughly where the, the colors are going. And, um, and also I, I, I won't have any lines after when um, we do the painting. I didn't uh, use normally I use this graphite pencil but I, I want my color to be clean and um, nobody this this bread has very bright uh, bright and vibrant colors so we need to keep them clean uh, the other thing I did I took a, a photo of the sketch and I have uploaded it so if you don't feel like uh, doing your own drawing uh, feel free to um, print it you can use it as a reference to make your own drawing or you can just uh, paint on it. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever you feel like. Not every day we feel like drawing. <laughs> but I, I highly um, recommend do your own drawings for, for the simple reason that you're getting better. Practice makes perfect. So the more we draw, the better we become, the more we see. Uh, okay, so I have um, today. I'm going to be using um, these colors. Uh, I had them for a while, and uh, I used them last year a lot. Uh, but I, I stopped using them for, for a little while. Um, it is the pretty excellent uh, 36 set. I really like them. They're very nice colors, very vibrant. Um, they're, they're student grade, they're not artist grade, so I'm, I'm not sure about the life fast, fastness, but for what I'm doing right now, I am, um, I'm happy to use them. Uh, so I also got my swatch here that it came with it and it was very handy. So I've done my swatch this, I can pick my colors that I want. So I haven't sprayed all my colors for the simple reason that I don't want to use them all, so uh, I just um, spray uh, pretty much all my greens. Um, I sprayed uh, a couple of blues and a few reds, and I think I should do also some yellows for the background. Uh, also because I'm, clean, I'm trying to clean up my palettes, I've sprayed all my palettes you see me oh yeah we'll be using all different colors so uh, the the brushes uh, I'm gonna start with the size 8 and the size 10 for the bigger areas and a liner this one I don't know I don't think I'm gonna be using this one today uh, and a really really fine one uh, I've got my two jars of clean water, my clean paper towels, and we're ready, set to go. Uh, I will start with um, the background because that helps me always to uh, understand the values. And if I uh, dirty a little bit my bird, I can always fix it. 
Uh, but if I have done my bird and then I go to do my background, then I, I might come up with surprises. So first I'm going to be doing the background uh, and then we will move on to the bird. Uh, now the paper, I'm using a haven't stretched it and I should. Um, I know I just got my gummed tape, which is for stretching uh, the watercolor paper, but I haven't stretched it because um, I prepared this um, paper a week ago and I didn't have the, um, the gummed tape at that time. Anyway, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, work. Even if it buckles a little bit, it is 100% cotton. So let's hope for the best. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the background. The background is going to be very blurry. Um, just drop some paint. light color as much as we can so we could be using the bouquet technique but um, this kind of um, background is um, Oops, it's working fun for me. This is the background. I might just go and dip in any colors from that I have handy from my other palettes. Now, uh, I just have to explain to you what happens with this paper. This paper, I got it from eBay. And it was uh, a pre-cut paper. They did say that it's Archie's. That's why I purchased it. And it was a really good price. But uh, by the way it performs, it is definitely not Archie's. And um, yeah, the the interesting part it was that um, they had actually a uh, press on it uh, that it's arches. Obviously, I'm not gonna buy from that seller ever again, and I won't buy pre-cut arches paper from a random person. Yep, just be aware when people are. Unless it is um, a genuine seller and verified, uh, if you, unless you buy it from a shop, uh, yeah, be aware not to purchase pre cut papers from random people. Yeah, this is definitely not artist performance, but yeah. Got sold for arches. I will show you. I still have it here. Uh, Body like this it says cold press. The brand arches, and it actually has the the press. It's fresh. I just maybe I use that one. What's this here? Yeah, though I'm not sure if you can see it says arches. It's definitely not arches. 
Anyway, I won't complain. I won too much. It wasn't expensive, so. But uh, I'm disappointed, obviously. But we learn from our mistakes, right? Definitely we do. And we can learn from other people's mistakes, like me. I have done these mistakes, I'm warning you, so... If you see extremely good price on a... And it's pre-cut, question it twice. Unless we prepare to give it a go to try, and if it's not good, it's not good. So, so yes, that's fine. With a, something like that, I was because uh, I still have my arches pads, so I wasn't depending on this particular uh, paper. But uh, I just got disappointed because I was expecting. You know, arches. I can tell how that it, it doesn't uh, blend nicely, and it's not because of the colors. These colors are blending fantastic on other papers. It's just uh, other than this one. this in travel anyway I should stop winching and concentrate on my painting what do you think So I'll put a little bit blue here and there just to create this the feeling of the foliage that here's the foliage and flowers and the sky comes through the foliage something like that I'm trying to create so I'm just putting um, different shades of greens to create again the a little bit depth uh, the foliage, okay, so some, some foliage is closer, some foliage is further away, we have shadows. Very abstract, very loose. But still we're trying to put... Um, couple of tonal values on each like the orange I'm gonna drop a little bit red the orangey red uh, to create again the a little bit I'm calling it pulse it's not pulse it's um depth Because this paper is not is actually absorbing my pigment, it doesn't show up as bright. So I have to go over it again and again. Okay. 
maybe I should be redoing this painting soon on another paper. Sparkle, sparkles. And I think that's it for the background for the moment. <laughs> I can always go back later. So uh, let's start with um, the Pharaoh's head. Um, so. First, I will wet it very, very lightly only uh, not everywhere only the areas that it goes red and uh, my drawing is giving me the guidelines where I have red because the red area is drawn with the red pencil so you can see it too see they, they don't even leave this paint it's not the paint it's the paper Okay, I have the feeling I'm going to be redoing this painting. And it's my favorite one too. So with red, I said I'm going to be using the Scarlet Lake to begin with. Which is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This one. Maybe with some more. Okay. So first I'm going to do a big blocking with um, the red. I will move on to the blue a little bit. I'm going to use the uh, cerulean, the cerulean, which is the uh, fifth, fifth, 
This one. Okay. Let's find the final area that uh, it's clean. So I'm not talking a lot now. I'm just concentrating to put the colors, distribute the colors correctly. Okay, and then I can go back and give some more details with my. Uh, here we are. We have some details around the eye with the red and. Um, We'll go back in and do that. This point here, you probably need to uh, have a look a little bit more on the drawing and also what I am doing. So have a little bit of uh, both reference. I'm sorry, I can't put um, the photo of the parrot on uh, on display. Uh, because it's not my image and I haven't asked for permission for uh, display the photo it is from uh, free reference photos for artists uh, on Facebook uh, on the Facebook uh, group that I, I am a member of but um, but but still because i haven't asked the permission i'm i'm not going to use the material of uh, the photographer even that is a free ref free for the artist's reference and they have explained that we can actually use them to even to make money on from, from that but it's still not my my image. 
when I have my images, I definitely put them on. <laughs> Just have to be very detailed on on this. Because the eyes is a very important part of the parrot. And basically for every animal or human part of the eyes is very important I'm just adding more pigment because um, it's very light, it's very pinky for the moment and I need to build up layers to get uh, to the value that um, I want it. Okay, at this point we have done the red, the blue, the background, and um, I'm going. We're missing the green, so let's get some green going on. Uh, I'm gonna try. Let's see the sub green. Oh, it's a bit too bright, but uh, probably it's not bad for um, an uh, for the first layer. Yeah, definitely I will start with that one. Of course, make sure that you have the, you keep one jar of water clean so you can dip your brush. You're not washing your brush in that one. You just dip it when you want extra water on your on your brush like I'm doing now And um, if you can, try to keep your strokes with the, the direction of the feathers. Because the watercolors are drying so fast and it shows those strokes and they're really great when um, you need to indicate feathers going that way or fair okay we're getting there almost there with the blocking 
I'm gonna need something really light color for the beak. Um, at the end, I'm gonna have to put some highlights with um, wash for the beak because it's uh, the background has uh, dated that spot, but that's okay. That's why we have always handy some gouache. So for the white parts of the beak, I just put like a really, really light gray. And I will work on it a little bit more. And then I'll get some painter's gray, which I really like. With that part of the pick, which is this part, so before my phone overheated again and um, stopped the key video, so yeah, I was talking to myself again <laughs> for a little while. Uh, so yeah, I just finished off the beak and um, then while I was uh, waiting for uh, my phone to cool down, uh, the, my paper dried, which it was what I, I wanted. And also, uh, once it dried, I just uh, went in with uh, some watercolor uh, pencils and I just. Um, Uh, I went over again to uh, to uh, find my feathers again because uh, it was all lost. So I just uh, put in and I uh, highlighted again uh, where the feathers gone. Um, so that's all I've done. And uh, now it's all nice and dry. We will uh, continue. It might take a little bit long now these days and I might gonna have to um, fast forward a little bit.
So now we're very close to the completion or um, yeah, I think it is very close. Um, the only thing that I want to touch a little bit is um, some areas at the background uh, that I would like to be a little bit darker. So to to bring out the uh, my design, like for example here, maybe I should uh, soon have used that color though. I uh, should have used maybe some blues. A bit dark that color that I put. So by making uh, our background a little bit darker, it, um, it shows the design of the beak a little bit better. And uh, the same I will do around here because I think it's too much of a contrast. And our background is very blurry, so we can do these alterations with no problem. Make sure that we don't leave any blooms. Just spread it so we don't have any hard edges. And uh, I would say that we're very, very close to the end. Just want to lighten up a little bit the wing and uh, a little bit here at the neck. Okay, and I think it is time to leave it. <laughs> um, kind of happy. Uh, it went through the masking. That's the yeah, end user law. I will blame the paper for sure. Yeah. I didn't put so much water and so much pigment. 
this paper was extremely absorbent. Very, very disappointed with the paper. And I've, I've used it, I've used that one because I was hoping that um, it's, it's a good one. Um, so I like I like the actual um, subject. My little birdie. No, it's a big birdie actually. This one, <laughs> but that's okay. I oh, will probably gonna have to remake it one day. And don't forget your signature because that's what you've done today and why not? It is not a masterpiece but it's my art for the day. And there we go. Uh, uh, beautiful parrot is ready. So if you enjoy this uh, tutorial, please don't forget to like our parrot. And um, if you haven't subscribed, please consider to subscribe. We're going to be doing lots of um, different kind of themes, watercolors, pastels, um, color pencils we'll get into drawing some stage and uh, 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 color theory and lots more so yeah please consider to subscribe click the notification bell so you get notified every time we upload a video and you check if you're interested in that you're gonna watch it if you're not interesting in the medium or the subject you can wait for the next one <laughs> so thank you for keeping me company while i was making this little feathery friend uh hopefully we'll see you soon at my next video till then be happy be creative and keep painting <laughs> Bye for now.